everybody, it's Sam at Mix.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet bird box gift box or storage box. So I'm using the new Dovecraft Secret Garden collection and it just, I don't know, as soon as I start using it, it just makes me want to make boxes and yeah, it's just beautiful. So for anybody new to the channel, this is something I made with the same collection a few weeks ago and this has been extremely popular. This is my she shed and this is a storage box and it opens like so and you've got lots of room inside. I have got stuff in it, I've just emptied it for the video. But yeah, so I will link up this tutorial here so you can revert to that because there's lots of bits that I use in this tutorial which you may want to use in that one. So you don't have to have this as a bird box. You don't have to have the hole there, you could have this as a house and obviously this roof or you could incorporate this style roof into the she shed. Now this style actually I was inspired by Louise who's on Mixed Up Crafters, the group and she shared her version of the she shed after doing my tutorial and I love the way that she'd done her roof and she'd like layered up all these pieces. Hers were in greys I think and a little bit thinner. I've used these one inch circles just to create this look here. But basically the box opens up by undoing your bow. I'll show you the different ways to do the top here as well because I do give you alternatives and then you just open it up inside and you have this really nice gift box or storage box. Now I have used grey board on the bottom so it's very very strong so if you do want to put a weighted gift in this it will definitely hold it and you can also go taller it's so easy to just extend this as tall as you want it's currently five by six up to that point there but obviously you do have up to there as well if you maybe don't have the hole or you know it's entirely up to you but you could certainly go taller with this so the yeah the ideas are endless I know that a lot of you that are going to make this and once you start sharing them over on the Facebook group I think you're going to just blow our minds again because since putting up like I said since doing my one seeing some of the people's versions I've seen fairy boxes little fairy homes even sorry um just just so many different styles it's a bit amazing I really have enjoyed seeing what you create so just to do it back up again you just then seal it all off now you can have a handle if you want to make this you know longer and again when we go through the tutorial I do show you how you can make it obviously longer I'll fiddle about with that bow a bit better but there we go and then on the front I've just used all the lovely elements from that collection I've used a little bit of my wooden dowel there just to have a little perch for the bird and yeah just think it's absolutely gorgeous and finished off with a, a very large butterfly there but it does look really really sweet so yeah and again just bring that one in because like I said it has been enjoyed by many of you and it is so cute all around the sides there as well so yeah I'm loving these I've got some really nice storage in my craft room now but let's crack on and let me show you how to make it okay so you're going to need a load of one inch circles so I just used my one inch circle punch there and I went through and punched I've got about 60 there because we're going to be covering the whole of the roof but that is optional you don't have to do that so I've got those all ready and I'll distress them and ink them all up once they're on so I've already done one half so this is what I'm going to be showing you to make so we're going to be making two of these and you can see there how they go together it's really really fun you need two pieces that are five and a half by nine. Now just ignore that I've cut the square out there, okay? Because I've gone, I remembered I had to film this, so I started doing stuff and I thought I needed to stop. So one, uh, two pieces of five and a half by nine. And along the five and a half inch side, you just want to score at five, okay? And then along the nine and a half, and then along the nine side, you just want to score at eight and a half, okay? So you want to do that twice. One we're going to be die cutting the hole through, the other one will be like this. So this is my back. Okay, so you want two pieces then of five and a half by seven. Ignore mine slightly over, yours will be seven. And you're going to score along the five and a half side, you're going to score at five. And then along the seven inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. And at six and a half. Okay two pieces then to mat the small pieces here the sides you need two pieces that are so you want it to be five and three quarters this was a piece of scrap I'm coming in at like five and a half but ideally you want it to be five and three quarters by four and three quarters so you want two pieces that's for your sides and then for the front rather than doing all funny cutting I'm just going to show you how easy it is to just use a piece of eight by eight pattern paper 
or you know something like once you see how I do it then you'll know but it's easy to cut out but I just thought you've already got the point here on the corner that we need so I'm just going to cut into this piece once we get to that and then I almost forgot you also need two pieces for your roof so either side so this is six by five remember two pieces and along the five inch side you want to score at three quarters of an inch like so okay so you should have six pieces you have two for the roof two for the front two that will be your front and back and two for the sides okay so you just want to go and fold and burnish all of your score lines you can see here I've obviously been drawing some pencil marks because I was trying to work out proportions and obviously how it's all going to look so to get this effect what we need to do is you've got your so we're working on our front and back piece at the minute so along the bottom, because I've already done it, you just want to cut the square that will be there. Okay, so imagine there was a square, you now want to remove it. And then you just want to take some little wedges off of there and there, and also on this piece here, because it's our side, okay? Then, don't worry about doing the top for a minute, because we're actually going to cut that away. With your ruler, you want to come down, and you want to put a pencil mark at two and a half inches. Okay, so two and a half, there's a little pencil mark. And along this score line here, you want to do the same. So two and a half. Okay. And then if you just follow that line off there with your pencil, all right. And then what you're going to do, a bit more, <laughs> is along the top here, ignore the tab, so you've got five inches, which will be that score line. You want to mark halfway, which will be two and a half. Okay, so just there. And then from that, you want to score to this point and from there to there. Okay, so I've already just roughly drawn my pencil line, but I'm just going to do a pencil line just so you can see a bit better. Okay, you want to imagine they're score lines. I'm going to rub this out and then rescore because otherwise that gets quite embedded in there, although you won't probably see it once I cover everything. But you just want to score both of those, okay? So next we need to do some more cutting. So where you would have done a pencil line there, I'll put mine back in, so I'm gonna remove that now. You're now gonna cut along that one and then just take a little wedge out as well, okay? And then you wanna cut all the way down this score line, like so. And then we wanna create like little tabs on the sides of our kind of roof here. So if you come up about half an inch, now if you wanna draw that with a pencil you can, but I'm just eyeballing this just like that and then again I'm going to come down because you're not sticking these down so they are going to be visible when that person opens the gift bag so if you do want to measure it and just make sure it's you know nice and straight then like I said by all means do so I'm just going to remove any bulk from the score line there like so so all that's going to happen with them is they're just going to fold in you can see here this is what they will look like and it just means that when you go to close the, the top of the gift bag you don't have any kind of gap, whereas if we were to just cut that right off, you'd have a bit of a gaping yeah, gap, basically. So it, it, I just think it finishes everything nicer, so that's why I've put it in there. But it's up to you, because I know like, we all like to change and adapt things. So now we've got this, so you need to do that twice, okay? And then you want to, on one of them, you need to do your circle. So you want to run it through your machine. And that's the other reason why I've chosen this size. I've tried to make sure that everyone can use their, like I said, A4 and letter paper size. Also, they can run it through a standard die cutting machine. You don't need an A4 machine. So I've tried to hopefully make it so that everybody can. So I'm just seeing here what size, I think that's going to be spot on actually, that one will be fine. So I'm just going to get this one ran through my die machine. Okay, so that's cut through perfectly and it's also removed all the pencil marks so I don't need to worry about that. Now, if you want to pop some acetate on the back of this, if you want to do any of that kind of thing, by all means you can. I know from looking at pictures of people that have done the little she shed or the house, you've decorated inside as well, so you know, go to town on this you know do whatever it is that you want to do because it will look fantastic but that's everything there so then all you want to do is just fold those carefully and just burnish them down now one thing I would have also should have said is we want to do this first so you it might be better if you cut this first and then cut it because you'll want this to have the hole in as well but anyway what we're going to do now with this piece is bring this over fold that tab underneath okay 
lay it down over the top and you want to bring it down so you've got about, mm, about a quarter of an inch border there. Again, if I fold those sides in, it's all much easier for you to all see. Can you see the kind of gap I've got there? So you want to have something like that. Hold it really tight at the top, but pinch it all in so it's not going to shift and flip it over. And actually I can draw a hole now where my circle is, so that's fine. Although I'm going to do a slightly bigger hole, so that's fine. No, I'll tell you how to do this actually. I've just come up with a quick idea. So just draw all the way down. I'm going to bring that bottom tab up as well. So you're just tracing around it, okay? So, and then I'm going to draw around the circle. Obviously these pieces we trace right up to the outer edge, whereas this here we have that little quarter inch border. So when we go to cut it, we're just going to cut in slightly on each side and then it should just fit. It was just, I just thought a bit of an easier way to do it. So I'm going to just grab my trimmer. I'm going to pop it in and just line up the pencil mark. I'm going to follow the pencil mark first because I want to make sure everything's straight. Okay, like so, and then I'm just going to come in a little bit more. So I'm just going to overhang about, again, this, whatever the border is that you've already given it. Like so. Okay, now flip this back over. You should have a perfect mat. Okay, so it fits on there really well. Again, if I just fold in all of them, you can see I've got that nice border. Once so I line it up all the way around. So now I'm going to die cut that circle again. Okay. So now I need to make sure that that lines up, which it does. So that is going to line up like so. And then I'm going to make a frame to go around that and die cut those again. So remember the size circle that you've used, keep it to one side and we'll be using that again once we come to decorate it and make the frame. So there's that piece all done. And then now you've got your side pieces. So again, you should have folded and burnished all of them. I've already removed this square at the bottom here because basically I, I've added a hinge to mine because it wasn't until afterwards I thought actually we need to make a base and I'll go through all that separately when we get to it. So I've just cut that square out of the bottom and then right above you'll have another square in that corner. So remove that same one. Okay. Now with the tab on the right hand side, this will be the hinge on the top and this will be the bottom. You want to make sure that you've got your hinge, that you, you want to make sure you've got your tab on the right hand side because it's the plain left hand side that's going to stick to the next piece. Okay, so you don't want to stick anything or any pattern paper and then realise you've got it upside down because look, you're going to have two tabs together. So always make sure that your tabs with all of it are always on the right hand side. And then along the bottom, I'm just going to take a little wedge again off of the corners and some wedges off of these but I'm not going to take any off the top because that's the hinge for the roof piece to go on so we're going to stick it to that and you can see how it's going to kind of work all right so then I've got my mats and layers so I'm going to rub this now out because you know the sizes and I'm going to get that stuck down so if you want to add any ribbon behind your paper if you want to you know, die cut more bits and pieces, do all that obviously before, because I'm now going to go and stick all this down. Okay, and then we can stick this one over the top here. I'm just going to add some glue. And then your score line should line up. I'd say focus, make sure your bottom one is lined up. That's the most important because, again, mine are just there. Because that one you've drawn in yourself, that's the two and a half one that you would have marked so you want to make sure basically it's the same when you do that two and a half inch marker with pencil remember when we done this section here just make sure that this piece where you scored all line up which they do because now what's going to happen is obviously when that folds around that's like i said the hinge for our roof so you want to do that twice you should have two pieces so you'll just have exactly this now one with the hole because that's the front and now we're going to do that roof part and then we can start putting it all together so it's really simple to do the roof so we've got our hinge, this is the top, okay? That's where we'll be hole punching, putting ribbon through and all that kind of stuff. So I've got all my circles here. And basically all I'd done was just run glue all along the very bottom. And to start off, you wanna hang this right over so that when the circles join, they're joining, that join is right along the bottom. 
you don't want to see any of the card underneath and again use your mat if you've got any kind of grid paper or anything just to kind of line it up just to make sure you're keeping things straight well especially to kind of start you off and because these are an inch long these discs I will get six in there perfectly okay like so then you want to add glue kind of in between again and then this one you're going to overlap right off the edge and then the next one you want to line up and it should sit if you put that one down first actually so it sits directly above where they join and then sit the end one on that means you've got them all in the right place and then you just go along again keeping them all lined up the key is to keep it all straight and just keep working your way up so you're overlapping each one so you can see now how I've got that overlapped piece so again I'm just going to add glue and you can do this with any shape so like I said before the ones that I've seen on mixed up crafters you know we've got ovals I think someone done a square so they don't have to be circles it's just what I've chosen but each time you're slightly overlapping it over the next kind of join so the joins here below my discs above are just covering that so I'm going to go and just get this quickly finished it doesn't take night no time at all if you've got a punch to punch them all out sticking them down is very very quick and don't worry if you don't meet up at the ends because your next layer will always cover that up okay so they're all stuck down you'll see here I've got these little bits here now you can leave it like that if you want it's entirely up to you but I did find that if you just cut the ones that you've got left just in half so you'll need I think it's either six or seven so these are the last few that I've got left so I'll just cut four of them in half so I've got eight and then again just pop some glue and then you just get the half side and the flat side you just pop up against the top so just put it in the same exactly the same pattern that you were following and you just want to butt them right up to that score line and it just finishes it off like a proper roof yeah so you need seven okay so I've just stuck my seven along the top there okay and then if you flip the whole thing over and you're now going to cut along the original shape that we stuck it all onto if you want to keep it like that by all means you can but I do like to cut it and that's the shape or the finish that you get okay so it's entirely up to you at this point I would say if you're going to definitely cut the top ones because they look a bit odd just coming off but these ones you can still get away with but I think this works really well for a mermaid's kind of um, tail as well or a fish tail and things like that so yeah I like to take it all off it's entirely up to you okay next we need to get this stuck onto this piece here now the easiest way to do this I did have it wrote on a piece of paper okay so what you want to do is lie that piece upside down then this piece over the top fold this down and you want this top here from there you want the gap to be just over three inches okay so it's about three three and just under three and one eighth so you want to make sure it's all straight actually if I lie that down there first that would make more sense and then you want to keep this all straight with this okay so make sure everything's lined up and then just make sure it comes down like I said three yeah I think that's about right and then pop that bit back up and with a pencil draw around that piece you'll just be able to draw on the three sides okay so it's this flap you'll see where I've just drawn around it okay if you want to draw a line now underneath connecting it you can but that's I know now that that's where I need to add my glue because this is the only piece that's going to connect the roof to the box okay and then again bring this in make sure that's lined up line up the sides here and then bring it up okay You make sure you include that piece when you line this up so it's straight with this piece not with that score line because the roof overhangs slightly on both sides so I'm just gonna just make sure that that all sticks down if you're using a wet glue just be careful it doesn't ooze out underneath this side because obviously it would stick to then this and it won't kind of work on its hinge 
Okay, so now you've got that. So you will now need to do that twice and you'll have your two pieces like this. So now I'm going to distress my roof. Probably, maybe if you're using the inks, it's probably best to distress it before you stick it down. But because it's just a small area and I've just gone over it with the frayed burlap and just keep layering it up. You fold that underneath, then you won't kind of get it on anything else. And um, yeah, again, this is entirely up to you. You might want to use, you know, you'd probably be using very different colours to me. You might not even be using craft card. But I'm just going to go over now and distress this. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. So next we need to put everything together. So you will have your tab here. And again, maybe that would have been better to stick your roof down at the very, very end, but you can still do it this way. You just want to pop your glue just underneath slightly there. Just lift that roof up and just pop glue along here. If you're not using liquid glue, double-sided tape will work fine, like so. And then I'm just going to sit that one underneath. And again, make sure your base is lined up. That's the most important part and that you keep everything straight. Okay, flip the whole thing over and then fold one side over and then this one will line up perfectly over that one there. So it's just the same as a normal box construction, it's just got a different opening um, than normal. Okay so now when you bring it all together these pieces will fold in and this should now Okay, so I've just changed the way that we put this together slightly because I found when mine came together they were slightly out. So I think it's best to stick one of the roofs down as I showed you, keep the other one free, and I've just peeled that off there so you can see. Um, obviously it's a little bit. What I might do is just reinforce that slightly with my red tape because that will actually kind of stiffen it because I've taken like the top layer of the craft card off. It's still all fine, the hinge itself is still strong, it's just that little bit of card. But I want to make sure that you get it spot on. So just taking the backing off there, so you just want to add glue there. Then close this roof here and sit this one right up to it. So you'll have it like that, okay. Sit it right onto the top of the box and then push it down on the side and that way you know that your roof is going to fit. Make sure your box is square, so I'm just using my grid and then everything will fall back into place and that way we will have a much better and more finished box. Like so, yeah that's much better, look how cute is that? <laughs> I love it. So now we need to just stick the base. Again, probably should have done that. This is what happens when I don't make two. So, but again, you just want to stick. So keep two opposite sides up. Same way that I stuck down the, I can't remember what one it was now. But I'm just going to add glue there and just hold it so it's nice and square. Again, if you turn it upside down and open up your box and again use your grid or your grid paper, you can just make sure that you got it nice and square. And you can just go in with a ruler and just push down on all of those corners. So yeah, I will edit in that just stick one roof down. Don't stick two, stick one of them right at this, this point here. Or even stick it after I've stuck the base down because at least then your actual bird box will be in its square form as well. So, but now, once I've squared off that base, that sits perfectly. Once we have the hole punches and the ribbon, or however you want to close, you, you know, you might want to do it differently, but no, I'm really, really pleased with that. Okay, so for the base, because I want to give mine strength, because again, I might want something heavy in this, but I'm probably just going to end up keeping this one. This is the pre-made 6x6 squares that I get with the chipboard or grey board when I purchase it from every cross a pound so any grey board or hard card you've got you want to cut down to six by six or layer up some strong card on top of each other you don't even have to you might just want to put you know normal card stock at the bottom if you know what you're putting in it isn't going to be too heavy and then I'm just cutting this pretty paper from the pack to six by six and I'm going to stick that directly over the top like so Okay, and now we want to add glue along here and stick that down. So you will have a really nice 
pattern inside and then you can put another I'd say maybe five and seven no this is five by five so I would say you could then put a layer on top of this that's maybe four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and then you can cover that if you don't want to see that but I quite like that so I'm just gonna run my glue around here okay and then very carefully obviously if your paper's directional make sure you've got it facing the right way but you just want to sit that on that base and you should have half an inch overhang on all four sides and again if you open this up now you can carefully apply more pressure inside okay so i've actually just gone and cut that four and seven eighth by four and seven eighth piece and you can see there when you sit it over the top so i am actually going to just drop that out and i'm gonna just stick that one inside there we go and that really just holds that all together i'm going to try and tidy my piece up there because obviously i had to rip that side off but like I said, I, do, I don't think I'm going to be giving this away because I love it too much. So now you want to do this piece here. So the easiest way to do that is you can have the frame any colour you want. I'm going to continue mine using this. But you want the original circle that you use and then the next size up. Okay, and you're going to sit them inside each other, making sure that you've got the exact same border or like ring. So I can see that. Obviously the frame will be bigger once it's cut. It's always a bit fiddly, but you will get there. So it's that one there, and I'm just going to pop one there. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so once it's cut, you will get this, and it will now sit perfectly over, like so. Again, if you want to do more to it, you can. I'm just going to run some glue around that. You might want to do a couple of frames, but like I said, if you do want to do the acetate as well, you've can still got time to add that in. Okay, so that is how it's looking so far. So next, you have all this space now to do your sentiments. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put on mine yet, and I'm going to add all of my decoration, and then I'll be back, and we can finish it off with our ribbon and just sealing the top there. But I am so pleased with how this looks, and I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, so I've put everything together and you can see here how I finished it off on the front. So I've just decorated it. I've kept it simple-ish, I guess. So I've got my little bird there and I've just cut some of the wooden dowel that I already had and just distressed it with the same distressed, uh, or no, it was the actual just the distressed ink that I used on the top there. And then I put another bird there. So I've used these here. So it's the sentiment toppers and I've used the with love because I thought that way if I do end up giving it to someone it will work for quite a few occasions I've used these are the 30 paper blossoms and leaves so I've used them here but then these ones are using the 12 paper flowers and then the bird is from this here which is the six wooden toppers and it's the wooden birds and they're gorgeous so everything has come from the collection it's just the craft card and then obviously that grey board on the bottom there and then to do the top so I'm just going to undo my bow here. Now this extra piece is optional, but I thought if you, so I've got this piece here, if you want to keep yours as a gift box and you don't want to have ribbon or anything like that, what you can do, so this is a piece of one and a half by six and along the one and a half inch side, I scored it three quarters and then I've just inked it up and just stressed it. Now it, pretend mine hasn't got these holes already punched and what you can do is if you add glue to one side and just stick it to one half like this, you could then put Velcro dots or magnets on this side and then this piece will just snap over the top and close your box that way. Okay, so that's one option. The other option then is how I've done it now and I've just gone and hole punched through this all together on top of here. Now if you find that that's too thick, if you hole punch this piece first together like this and then put it over here, either side, draw the pencil around the circles on each side then hole punch each of these and then put it all together and that's what I did so I'm just going to pop that over the top there feed my ribbon through and this makes quite a big difference once the ribbon's on because it really does tighten that all up on that rooftop and then just finish it off with a nice big bow okay there you have it 
how cute is that it's just so adorable I absolutely love this so yeah I hope you feel inspired with this I hope you you know put your twist on it all of like I said all the she sheds that I've seen you have really transformed some of them and they have been absolutely incredible I've loved seeing all of those so hopefully you have the similar kind of response to this because it's so easy to obviously you know change up you don't have to have it as a bird box you can keep it as a house you can have a little door here there's lots of different obviously options for you you can put windows on all the sides yeah you can put a little fence around here so it's another version of that she shed so i think i said already i'll link it but i will link it up here and you know have a look at that as well because i'm sure that will help out especially you might want to add this roof style onto that for example so yeah so that is today's tutorial i hope you've enjoyed it as always please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more Thanks for watching, bye.